God is good? All the time. God is good. Praise the name of Jesus. Do a few things with you. And it's, uh, thank you very much, Sister Odessia, for that introduction. I'm not sure if you were talking about me, a commanding voice. You know, you have to listen. You don't, not really. And um, uh, I wish that I had voices like my other elders that command ears to ear, hear, and to listen. And uh, some of the other preachers that we have in the church. But I want to thank God for the opportunity we have of sharing together his word. And I want to talk about your feet this morning. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I want to also share with you briefly on what's happening as to go 2022. I notice we have 2021 up here. Forgive me, we'll get that started out. And we want to give an update on uh, last year's activity in Go 2021. And I also will want to share with you some of our goals and our program for evangelism explosion and evangelism training here in the church. Sometimes you put your stuff on, on the computer, but um, you don't always able to access it. I'm working on it, working on that. But I have my notes, all right? So you don't worry, I have notes, okay? So I'll be speaking with you. I've got something I want to say to you, all right? Can you put up that little um, image for me, uh, Brother Victor, with the feet, please? Okay, so this year, our assembly will be participating as we did last year. In Go 2022, the Go 2022 movement in evangelism and discipleship. An update on last year's involvement. Like I said, we would want to share with you what, how the church did, how many people were involved, and so forth. But we are sensing already the moving of the Spirit of God on our hearts and our lives in this ministry of personal evangelism. Last Friday, I was really blessed in the prayer meeting with the earnestness and the zeal which many persons were praying for our families, for our communities, for our relatives, and so forth. This tells me that we are connecting. When prayer is heightened in any community, in any church, it says that the Spirit of God is working, bringing forth faith out of our hearts. Prayer is an expression of faith in our hearts. And Pastor Des, I don't know how you're sensing it, but I, I'm sensing that the Holy Spirit is moving, is blowing, a breeze is blowing across the congregation. And it's not because of your doing and mine doing. We are in the place to receive it. But it's not because of our works, but because of His grace. I want to encourage all of us to continue to press in, continue to go on. And those of us who are lagging behind or those of us who are having weights on our system, let's submit, let's get into what God is doing. It's the day of freedom. 
Our God reigns. Our God is champion. And you are a champion too. And if we are, we are living below that standard, then obviously we are not for following and fulfilling what God has ordained for our lives. So we want to thank God for what he is doing. As we are sensing the moving of his spirit upon each of our hearts and our lives. Now, the, the, there is what we call the Go 2022. And uh, that's important for us to uh, understand what's going on. Last year, you know, we had Go 2021. And we invited everyone to come on board. This year, we would like to repeat that invitation to every member of the church. We have about 400 persons in this local church as members. About. It might be more Pastor Des. Amen. Pastor Des didn't say anything. Praise the Lord. We, we are still working on the numbers. But it must be about 400. More likely 400. And, and you know, God hasn't placed us here just to warm benches. He has placed us here to multiply. Somebody say amen. Your, your job and my job as disciples and those, that he has, those of us he has brought into the, into the assembly is so that we will multiply, that we will not remain unfruitful. Everyone knows the scripture. The Bible tells us that you didn't choose him, but he chose you. He chose me. That's what it says there in the book of John chapter 15 and verse 16. And he has ordained and appointed you to bring forth fruit and that your fruit remain. Any person, any believer, any child of God that is barren in their lives and barren in going forth, we are not in the will of God. And you need to ask yourself, am I born again? Am I part of the kingdom of God? Because he says, once he has chosen you, you know it. You will bring forth fruit unto him. And I want to challenge you to bring forth fruit unto him. So go 2022 is about bringing forth fruit unto the Lord. Go 2022. We have what is called a go month in the year. And everybody knows what the go month is, right? Go month is in May. May 2022. And what do we do in May 2022? We are going to be praying. We are going to be evangelizing. It's a month of prayer and evangelism. As God's people across the nation. And around the world. Because God is saving people all over the world. My brother Vic, can you help me up with this? Uh, with, with the um, Go 2022 Document, please. So we have a go month, which is in May. And we want to encourage you at, to, wait, to share the gospel with at least one person a day. One person a day. All right? And uh, go month, May 2022. Let's, let's just uh, touch on the one that says more about go months. Would you just touch here for me? More about the month. Let's see what's happening. So, like I said, Go Month is about prayer and evangelism. Prayer and evangelism. It's an opportunity for every believer to use five weeks in May to pray and to evangelize, to share the gospel. And I trust that you would want to be on board, you would want to come in on board and be part of this event. All right? These activities. Move up, right. Move up for me a little, please. Go month is a perfect time to pray, to care, and to share. To care, to pray, and to share. Your testimony can change a life forever. You can share your testimony during that month. Let's go up a little bit, please. Go a little bit more. Share your testimonies with others. 
and see them come to, um, to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's also a time when we, go, when we train others. We are training people to share the gospel. And next month, I'm going to be giving you some specific dates later on. But next month, we want to have one day when we will have a, what is called a workshop. Evangelism workshop. Share your faith workshop. And it's going to be on a Saturday, and we are going to um, in, we are inviting in all of us who um, are members of the church to come in and be trained and be or be refreshed in your training, so that you can sharpen your tool to share the, the, the gospel. We're going to give you some dates. It's going to happen in April next month, and we're going to tell you what's going to happen. Okay, the 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 um. April 30th is for the other, the um, worldwide body of the Go 2022. Please go up a little bit for me, please. Right. Then it also, we, in May, we said we're going to pray. We're going to pray where we are, pray for the world. All right. And then also in May, we share the gospel. Would you go up, please? Right. Reach one. Sorry, it says, we encourage everyone to share the gospel with as many people as possible. You can do it. Reach one, share the gospel with one person in May, one person. And trust God that they will make a commitment of their lives to Christ. Reach one a week. All right? You know, the last year we, env we encouraged each person to, uh, to find it or to list Five persons you would want to share the gospel with. You call them my five. Everybody can have five persons to share the gospel with. And trust God that they make a commitment of their lives to the Lord. Then we have a one-day challenge. What's a one-day challenge? Okay. Would you um, just press on this, the CV's video challenge for us, please? One-day challenge. What's that? The CV video challenge is that you're encouraged to share an evangelistic video every day in May and uh, nominate five other believers to do the same. Nominate five other per persons to do the same. In other words, every day in May, online, you can share a gospel, sorry, share a video, a gospel video with somebody else, somebody who needs to hear. And you're going to, we're going to talk about how you're going to get those videos in a short while. Just move up a little bit, please. The same. Right. Share, share the gospel online. Approaching people in the streets can be intimidating for some people. But how about just sending them a video every day? Post a video. Post one video per day. Go up, please, would you? And then interact with your followers. You post it, you can post it on Instagram or on uh, WhatsApp, right? Or you can post it by uh, your Telegram or whatever, or Messenger, whatever you're using, post it. And people who are, are connected with you or people who will, there are people who will see it, they will want to come connect with you and you can share the gospel with them. Interact with your followers. People will respond to these videos Answer to their comments, likes, or messages, and keep an eye out for opportunities to share the gospel. Ask questions like, did you like the video? How did you feel about it? Is there anything I can pray for? And tell them what made you believe in Christ. And then lastly, nominate five other people. This challenge, you can uh, not challenge your fellow Christians to participate in the CV video video challenge. This is probably one of the easiest ways to share one's faith. Exchange your experience and motivate each other along for 31 days in May. All right. So this is the, the CV a video challenge. And we want to encourage all of us to come on board. To, you can use those videos. Where are you going to get those videos? Just go up for me a little, please. Right, so you can download videos, and you can download it using this uh, site, 
that we are using right now. All of this is on, on the internet. You can get onto it. Just go to go movement, go movement, um, dot com or to go movement and you will get on to the site and you have all the information you need there. Okay? Just go up for me a little bit. Sorry, press, just press download video. Download videos. And you see, that's how it works. And they have hundreds of videos. Now, you, you will need to um, determine what videos you will use. There are different languages, videos that are there. Christian videos when you need them. Any amount that you want. Okay? And um, just go up a little bit, please. There are training videos and other kind of videos. And all kinds of videos you have there. I'm trying to find where the videos are. Just go, come back down a little bit. Please. Come back down. Can you go down? Yeah. Now when, you, when you get on there, I'm sure you're going to be able to navigate yourself and be able to come onto the videos. All right, so that, that's, that's that for, the, for now. Let's go come back out of that and move up again, please. All right, so share the gospel in May. And we, we, we saw this already, all right, that we reach one, share the gospel with one person in May, reach one a week, for example, five persons, my five, and then you do a, a day challenge, one day challenge, one a day challenge with, the, with your videos and uh, help other Christians to get involved as well. Can you go up a little bit now? Can we move from there? All right. So, and you, if you like, when you get on the insight, you will learn a lot more about, about Go Day, about what it means to what you can do on Go Day and make it workable for you. All right. So, I'm going, just going to come out of that for now. And I want to uh, trust God that each of us will get courage and get the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be involved in May. But the thing is, we don't have to wait until May to share the gospel. We don't have to wait on May to interact with persons. Last week, we had a, a gentleman here, um, a, a young man, I think he's about 24, 25, that made a commitment during the week and was able to be in church. And I'm, I'm, I'm blessed by so many of us who are taking the opportunities one way or another to share Christ. It doesn't mean that every time we share Christ, that somebody will, will, will uh, commit their lives or um, become uh, a believer or anything like that. Let me tell you, the devil is fighting. But I discovered something, that as a result of this pandemic, that most people are far more open to hear the gospel than before. All they're waiting for is somebody to tell them. And I was testifying the other day. It just happens when I go to the hospital... Brother Trevor, amen, that's your, your ground. And, um, you know, or on the road, people are open to hear the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, don't wait until May or even um, after May. Let's share the gospel all year round. Let's multiply ourselves. The Bible tells us that God has given us His Holy Spirit so that we can be what his call is to be. Amen? All right, let me just move ahead and talk now about feet. I'm sure you're ready to hear, you want to hear about feet. What am I going to say about feet? Some time ago, we spoke about the genius of the hand. And uh, the hand illustrates, the hand our palm, our hands can share the gospel. God has created every member of our bodies so that we can bring the good news of Jesus Christ. And as we use our hands to share the gospel, we can also use our feet. And we want to talk about that today. What does the Bible say? But before we go into what the Word of God says, it, let me tell you some facts about your feet. About your feet. Number one. Your feet have about 250,000 sweat glands. Do you know that? 
which produce up to half a pint of perspiration every day. There are approximately 8,000 nerves in the feet. That's more per square centimeter than any place else on your body. Here, listen to this fact. Now, your toenails grow more slowly than your fingernails. You may have discovered that already. Approximately one millimeter per month, your toenail grows. Here's a second fact I want you to know. Babies' feet grow rapidly by age one. Most have reached nearly half their adult size in their feet. I don't know if you ever thought about that. Those of us who are still rearing. Now, feet are largest. Feet are largest at the end of the day. So don't uh, buy your shoes early in the day. Buy it late in the day. The feet are often considered the foundation of the body. There are numerous benefits to having strong feet. And this can be encouraged by performing proper foot exercises. Additionally, flexibility can be attained by exercising the feet. And this may positively affect your balance and support of the body's weight. Those of us who are having problems with balancing and standing up uh, straight or um, being steady when you're standing, work on those feet. Exercise them. Exercise your feet. So this is um, uh, some facts about, about feet. But let's hear what the Bible has to say about feet. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 52. And we want to read a couple of verses there. Verse 7 to 10. So just as the hand can be used in sharing the gospel, we can use our feet. Hear what the Bible says about your feet. It says in verse 7, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Not the mountains are beautiful, but your feet on the mountain is beautiful. How beautiful on the mountains. And we, we're going to talk a little bit about mountains and about feet in a short while. Who proclaim peace? Who bring glad or good tidings? Who proclaim salvation? Who say to Zion, your God reigns? Listen, you watchmen, lift up your, their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Amen. What a powerful scripture. And you might think that this is referring to the uh, Israelites and the Jews. But the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 15 says this scripture refers to the church. God's people. And we want to see if we can look at, see a little bit of what God is saying to us there. All right? Now, a little background to the text. Now, Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they were enslaved in death bondage to the Babylonians. In other words, they were living in the land of the Babylonians as slaves. Many of us know about Egypt when the Israelites were slaves for 430 years in Egypt. And that was terrible. But in this case, it was more than terrible. Because King Nebuchadnezzar held a strong iron fist on them. I keep thinking about Ukraine. I don't know if you read your news, or if you listen to your news, or how you get your news. But Ukraine is going through something 
similar to what these Jews went through, except that they have, their destruction isn't complete as yet. But the Russians intend to throw down their buildings, to des um, desolate, make the land desolate, and to destroy everything of value, and to displace them, send them somewhere else. As a matter of fact, he wants them to go to Russia. We've been hearing about a corridor that's open for Russia. They're supposed to be going to other nations. But Mr. Putin wants them to go to Russia. Similar to what's happening here. But this was more terrible. And so the Jews, the, the Jews from Jerusalem and Judea, all right, was in terrible uh, de depression and oppression. Is there where the psalmist says, that how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? By the rivers of Babylon. M many of you know that song. But it's taken from the Bible. By the rivers of Babylon where we sat down. Where we wept. And where our enemies demanded of us a song. But how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Brothers and sisters. People today are also in terrible bondage and oppression and uh, controlled and enslaved by the devil. This is not speaking merely about physical the physical experience of the Jews because God is referring here to people. People, both physical and people spiritual. Everywhere we go, we look around. You just listen to what's happening on the news. People are killing people. People are killing themselves. The drug, uh, dra the, drug, the drug trade and the drug use and influence on people's lives that are causing them to commit suicide. Some are dying quickly. Some are dying, taking long to die. The, the immorality that is taking place in our land shows that man is not in control of himself. He's got to do what his base desire demand of him to do. The Bible tells us that, we, that, uh, that mankind is in slavery to the devil, to the things of darkness, to the kingdom of darkness. Because he who commits the sin, the, the Lord Jesus says, is a slave of sin. And whoever you obey, says the Apostle Paul, Whoever you yield the members of a body to be obey, they are your masters. That's why he encourages us to align with the Lord Jesus Christ. Every person that has been born into this world were born on, in the kingdom of darkness and under the power of the enemy. But thank God, God's grace today is available to all men. His will is that they be set free, every man be set free. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested into the world. That he might destroy the works of the devil. For God is not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Brothers and sisters, we have got to begin to open our eyes to see that all. God wants all to come to freedom and deliverance from bondage. The city, their city back home was also destroyed by the Babylonians. So the Babylonians came and attacked the, the uh, Israelites in Judea and Jerusalem and destroyed them. And he took everybody, almost everyone, to Babylon as slaves. This is where we find in the Bible that you have uh, the, 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 um, the, the prophet Daniel and the other Hebrew boys who rose to prominence. In that land, even in the land of, of poverty, a, a land of depression, a land of control and bondage, God raised them up. But they were in terrible, terrible straits, <clears throat> excuse me, so to speak. And they were always longing to go back to the promised land, the place that God had promised them. But they were in bondage. So here is Isaiah in his imaginative picture of the messenger speeding over the hills toward Jerusalem, announcing the coming salvation, capture, uh, which captured the passion and excitement of the gospel, the gospel 
uh, presentation, gospel of salvation. What, what I'm saying is this. When Isaiah, as we're reading here, prophesied, actually he was prophesying. Now a prophet is somebody who sees, somebody whose eyes are open, somebody who can see beyond the natural. All right? So earlier on you'll discover that um, the, uh, the, the Israelites were saying to God, you awake, awake God and see what they're doing to us. But in, here in this chapter, as you read down, you can see God is calling on them to open their eyes, to become awake, to look and see. But Isaiah was able to see. Isaiah was able to see into what God was doing. The time wasn't fulfilled for them to be completely delivered. You see? And so they were in the middle or in the midst of that terrible oppression and depression and slavery and bondage. But they were longing because Jeremiah and uh, Daniel, they had prophesied before the 70 years that they need to be there. Some people took it seriously. Some people did not take it seriously. I want to say to you, brother, I want to say to you, sister, I don't know what circumstances you may be in, but God has spoken to your life. God has spoken to your situation and he will bring you out of that bondage. He will bring you out of that oppression. He is working on your behalf. I'm, I'm going to tell you because this is what his word says. Amen. Amen. This is the word of God for you. You will not remain in that oppression and depression and the bondage that the enemy has brought you in. Maybe you're saying it's family related. It's generational or it's some curse that somebody put on you. But Jesus came to release you from every curse and every bondage. And today there is a, a, a voice that is speaking forth on your behalf. God's word has already spoken over you. You need to believe it and you need to walk in it. Do what God says we ought to do. So here is Isaiah prophesying. And announcing, he says, salvation is coming. God is going to liberate you, and God is going to bring you back. Now, they couldn't believe it, Brother De Pastor Des. The reason is, the walls, their walls was broken down. The land, everything was burnt. Their, their, their place of worship, the place where they meet with God, it was destroyed, went to the ground. When, Jeremiah, when, sorry, when Isaiah prophesied there, many of them says, when this will be, how this will be, how can it be? That God is going to restore us. Our walls are broken down. Our gates are broken down. Our temples are broken down. Our houses are broken down. There is no place to inhabit, to inhabit there. And not only that, the land is not bringing forth as well. There's a famine in the land. It was terrible. It looked impossible. The word didn't look as if it will ever come to pass. But yet the prophet spoke in the word. Hallelujah. Yet he, he was bold enough and powerful enough to speak the word. Our fellow men and women are in bondage to slavery and sin and Satan. But God is calling you and I to bring them out. We need to say like the Lord Jesus, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the good news to those who are in bondage. To those who are in darkness. Every child of God. God has made you a messenger with anointing for his whole, from his Holy Spirit. To speak into the lives of our fellow men. Our families. Our sons. Our daughters. Our neighbors. Our colleagues. Everyone. God wants us to speak the word of liberty. The reason God is doing this is because he set you free and me free. He set us free so that we may go and bring forth others and proclaim the salvation that has come. Let me ask you, as you have read the passage as well. It says the watchman, the watchman looks and he sees the man running and coming, the messenger coming. And he's coming with good news. But he says, how beautiful are the feet of him on the mountains. I don't think that this, um, this guy who was running, this uh, messenger who was bringing good news. It says how beautiful his feet is. How beautiful on the mountains his feet 
His feet is. Feet are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, how beautiful. But this wasn't a scene of beauty. I think that the prophet meant something far different. We are going to see that in a moment. But here is the messenger running. He says he's running on the mountain. And his feet is beautiful. Beautiful feet of them who brings good news. Proclaiming peace. Bringing good news of happiness. And what does he say? Our God reigns. Who do you think this messenger is? Who would you liken this messenger to? Can anybody shout it out? Thank you very much, Pastor. I remember you went to Bible school, all right? Yes. It, this is the believer who has been set free. This man could not move unless he was freed. And he's been freed and he's coming to tell his fellow men, his fellow countrymen, freedom has come. Salvation is here. He was free enough to move along. And I say to you, and thank you very much, Pastor Des, it relates to every believer. It's time that you pick up yourself and move along. This guy was determined. He was dedicated. He was devoted to carry the message and carry the word to his fellow countrymen. Oh, they were looking out. They were hoping that somebody every day, those who were downtrodden there in, in, in Jerusalem, they were hoping that they will hear some good news. But here it was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. To every believer, God is sending you. God is calling us to run. Why has he given you your feet? For what reason do you have your feet? Is it to do your own thing? Is it to bring in your own earnings? Is it to take care of yourself? Some of us will say things like that. I go where I want. I do what I want. And nobody is to tell me what to do. But I said to you today that the Bible says you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your feet. Glorify God with your feet. I know it says body, but your, your feet belong to your body. Glorify God with your feet. Take the good news. The greatest thing we can do is to take the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today to open your ears to hear what God is saying. Open your eyes to see what God is saying. Who is God sending me to? Who is God uh, wanting me to share the gospel with? Father, we pray you'll give us a great passion. We pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit of, a, of anointing and the baptism of your Holy Spirit will come upon every believer afresh. Father, not because I am asking, because it is your will. You said, Lord, ask according to your will and it shall be done. And so today I pray for every person, every member of this local church, that once again we will be stirred with the power of the baptism of your Holy Spirit that enables us to do the calling that you've given to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Amen. I want to close by sharing with you some of the info from our last activity last year. And I'm going to ask our dear brother, Victor, uh, who's manning the uh, internet and the computer there, if you will just bring up that video for me. Sorry, not a video. It's a PowerPoint. Sorry, um, Victor. It's a PowerPoint. And I want to thank a few people who have been helping to put things together since last year, the serving the kingdom, uh, their sister, um, Noeli and uh, Noeli Plast has been working. Uh, I can see a bright and beautiful PowerPoint. Yeah, that's nice, Pastor. Amen. And uh, Sister um, Rachel, Sister Shalon, Sister Melinda, and uh, some of the other brothers have been also assisting with putting things together for the um, administration of evangelism. 
So what happened? This is just a preliminary um, report. I'm going to give you the final report later on, and it has to do with a few things. But let's go here. Would you what? So 56 of us took up the challenge to spread the word of God and evangelizing with the rest of the brethren, locally and internationally. And remember, we had uh, invited at least 200 persons from the local church. I know there are some of you who didn't register. You, pro you were sharing the gospel, you intended to register, and you didn't do it, and so we don't have the record there. All we have is 56 persons recorded as registered sharing the gospel. I wish if I can show you their names. Do we have their names? Yeah, I think the um, Google form has the names. And perhaps next time I'll share the names of those who uh, participated. 56 people, faithful persons. And I'm glad that you um, saw that and you're able to put it in. Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, the age range of those who responded is here as well. And um, they tell us how many people were involved. The blue tells us about the 18 to 24, and there was 15.8% of uh, 18 to 24 who were involved. And then the red is also um, between 25 to 34, and we had 15.8 again, just as the blue. And I, I would think that that's where the young people are, between 18 and, um, 18 and 34. The young people, the young adults, that's their age. But we notice that only about 15% of the, the two groups um, that participated. And we trust God, that we are trusting God that this year, that more of our young people will come on board and uh, do what God has called us to do so that we may see the salvation of our God, that we can proclaim the, Lord's re the Lord reigns. And then we have the orange. Orange it represents 35 to 44. And that's a good age. And they had 21% doing um, involved in the sharing of the gospel last year. And then we have the 45 to 54, which is the green. There was 18.4%. And that's not the best, not good. But then we had the 55 and above, all the adults. I'm, I, I, I'm tempted to ask you to stand, to put your hands together for all these senior people, the people who are 55 and above. Would you put your hands together for them? Amen. And you know, it says here that 28.9% got involved. But let's put our hands for everyone who was involved in the sharing of the gospel last year. Thank you very much. Can we look at the next slide, please? The amount of persons they promised to reach. And you know, this, this is a little bit tricky. But we, we're glad that we, we had objectives. And most people took the advice that we give them that you choose five persons, uh, they my five, and 71% of the person says that we will want to reach at least five. But there were some people who went a little higher. There are some people who, who had something like 26, uh, 26 to 30 persons they were hoping to reach. And we are trusting God that they will repeat that and achieve it this year in 2022. Can we go up to the next slide, please? And this is how they planned to achieve their goal. And th this all happened here in South Road. And you will see that most people indicated that they want to use social media paths to this. Most people are going to use social media. And that's good. It's okay. Once you, are, uh, you stay faithful to the individual you're working with, I think it will work beautifully. Social media. Some people did face-to-face -face interaction. And um, some people did phone calls and so forth. Can we see the next slide? Is it there? Right. And then there were some goals, some other goals that people had individually. And we want to thank God because there are a number of persons who committed their lives to the Lord. And we're going to bring those figures to you later on. There are some people who still haven't submitted the results of their witnessing. The witnessing form is still there. And we will really want to hear from you what God is doing so we can rejoice together. The Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven over one person who repents. 
But we want to fulfill God's mandate on our lives as an assembly to share the gospel, to, to, uh, to evangelize Guyana, Georgetown. The Bible tells us that we are, sorry, the, our motto it says, a light to the city. And the, way, the best way to be a light to the city is by sharing the gospel with your friend. Sharing the gospel with your neighbor. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The best way to love your neighbor is to what? Share the gospel. It's to share it with them. Show your love. Don't say, uh, we have love and we're keeping it to ourselves. Let's share the love of God with our friends and our neighbors. Amen. Sounds good? All right. I look forward to all of you in this year working in 2022 to share the gospel before May, during May, and after May. All right. God bless you.